Hi everyone, it's Charlene with Tranquil Tuesdays, and today we're going to talk about water. Um, before we go there, I just need to apologize about my bangs. I, like many of you, have not had a chance to have a haircut in over two months. I have not braved cutting my own bangs yet, but I will do that after this video. And I guess next week you're gonna <laughs> we're gonna all see how it went. Um, but anyways, today we're gonna talk about water, and I thought to talk about water because water is 95%, if not 98%, of a cup of tea. Um, I thought a good tea to make while talking about water was green tea. So today I am going to make a Japanese sencha, which I got at the grocery store because that is pretty much the only place to go nowadays is grocery stores. And um, I feel like Japanese green tea tastes like springtime to me. So I bought it as a gift to myself when I went grocery shopping. So I'm making Japanese sencha. Um, first, I'm gonna heat up the implements. I am using a subin today, a modified subin that my friend gave me as a gift, my friend Sandy. She got, she gave it to me from Taiwan. Um, it is actually missing its lid, but I continue to use it anyways. Um, and as you might know, Taiwan and Japan have a history with each other. And so that's why some Taiwanese tea culture and tea implements like this has Japanese influence. Okay, so I'm gonna put in the, and so why I thought that green tea, well, not only is it great to drink in the springtime, sort of like a spring tea, um, I mean, not sort of, it is a spring tea, but um, the reason why I thought it would be good to drink today as we're talking about water is because I think green tea is the tea that needs the most attention and mindfulness in regards to its water in terms of the water temperature and the steeping time, which is something we definitely talked about in the um, two mistakes to avoid when steeping green tea video. Um, so I thought that was appropriate. So I heated up everything. Um, now I'm going to do a rinse. And the water, I actually don't know the exact temperature. Um, it was boiling maybe like 15, 20 minutes ago. And so I'm gonna let it sit out just for a little bit. So as you saw, I poured my water from electric kettle. And I want to talk today about heating water and why it is very important that you heat water either on a stove top or electric kettle or over a fire, but not to microwave it. Because I know this seems really picky, but microwaving your water is not gonna give you the same quality of hot water. And that sounds insane, but there are actual scientific reasons. Um, so I'm gonna let this cool down just one more second. So when you use, when you heat water from the bottom, like you would in a stovetop kettle or electric kettle, um, you're heating the bottom, right, uniformly, and then the hot water is rising to the top because heat rises, as we've all learned in school, I hope. Um, and the cold water is going down and you're creating this cycle, um, a convection current that's heating the water uniformly. And when all of the water is boiling, right, either you get a ding or your kettle turns off or you hear a whistle or you see the steam and or you can see with your eyes that the water is boiling and you know all the water is uniformly warm, hot. That is very important for making some tea because as you know, water temperature is important. This is my tea rinse. And when you, okay, I think we're ready to go in now. And when you um, heat your water with a microwave, you do not get a uniform, a uniformly heated water. So I am going to pay attention to this tea, make sure I steep it, and then we're gonna go into microwave and water. Um, and I will say the water quality is going to have a huge impact on your tea too. Like if you have tea that tastes like very chlorinated or really soft or really hard, it will definitely impact your cup of tea. Because like we said, tea is 98% water. Uh, 
I mean, there are people who like to use like double filtration systems, people who like to who swear by certain mineral waters. Um, you know, I've heard about this tea brewing competition, which I know seems kind of crazy because the idea of a tea brewing competition seems sort of antithetical to the concept of tea. But anyways, um, in this tea brewing competition, the woman who won brought her own water. And she brought her own water because she had in the overnight infused the water that she brought with bamboo charcoal to imbue the water with um, some minerality and that added minerality gave her final tea brew more dimension than everyone else so you know people like look into ph balance i mean it's a whole thing so that's my way of saying water is very important serious tea drinkers take their water very seriously and I don't think you need to start infusing your own water, but I do really want you to please not microwave your your water. So let's try it. I don't think I did it long enough. But it does taste very nice. It's a bit light, um, but that was my bad because I didn't put it long enough. Anyways, so let's talk about microwaves. Microwaving your water for tea and why that doesn't work. I did a little research. I felt the article that was the best description was something written by Nadia Arumugam. I tried my best, Nadia. Um, and her last, and that's published on in Slate. And she breaks down the reasons like this. When you're microwaving your water, right? The microwaves themselves are shooting tiny waves into liquid at random locations, right? So instead of this heating from the water, creating a whole conductive current, it's just like zing, 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 zing at different, different locations in your water. And at those little locations, the molecules are vibrating rapidly, but you're getting different pockets of heat in your water and not a uniform heated water. And so if you're trying to get water that's cooler for green tea, there's no guarantee really what the actual temperature is. And if you're trying to get really hot water for something like, you know, black tea or an herbal tea or a pour, there's no guarantee that you're actually getting water hot enough to do that, to really um, release the flavors and the aromas from your tea leaves. I would say the other important thing is if you overboil your water, which you can do with a microwave, um, you, you lose more of your dissolved oxygen and you don't want that because as we all know, water is made of H2O, the O oxygen, and having um, oxygen in the water is an important part of making your tea brew taste sort of alive and vibrant. And if you lose too much of it and dissolves too much out, then you you have a very flat water and you're gonna have a flat brew. So I know that's really going there <laughs> with your water, but I think the most important thing I want you to take away is please do not microwave your water for making tea. Please just boil it. You can even just boil it in a saucepan, which I've definitely done many times when I didn't have a kettle. Just boil it in a saucepan and you know there's different techniques we've talked about about how to cool the water down um and you're gonna have a much better cup of tea and i really hope that you'll be able to notice the difference actually i think people do notice the difference um side by side i mean i encourage you conduct your own science experiment and let me know how it goes in the comments um so yeah number one thing please do not Microwave your water, please boil it either on the stovetop with the kettle or with the electric kettle. And um, next week, I'm actually going to talk about cold brewing tea, which is sort of like the inverse of this, which is if you don't need to boil your water at all and having and have great tea. Also, it's getting hotter, so I think that's something we're all interested in. So next week, we'll talk about cold brewing tea. But for this week, if you make a warm cup of tea, please don't microwave it. All right. Thank you.